Welcome to Scorched Earth. This is going to be a mid-month reading for a sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant. If you don't know where your Moon or Ascendant signs are, have a look in the description box below. There's a link down there that will help you. And then you should come back and watch the videos for your Moon and Rising signs, because they might give you a better idea of what's going on with you overall than you would get from just your Sun sign. Um, certainly there's been a period in my life, quite a long time, where I resonated with my Rising sign more than my uh, Sun, but... Um, Sun and Moon, actually, because they're the same. But I've rectified that, so that's all good. Anyway, thank you for your continued support. You know, those people who subscribed, liked, left nice comments, you know, um, donated to the channel, and sent me messages. I've had some really, really wonderful messages from people reaching out, um, just to let me know. How, uh, how the videos have affected them and that's been an absolute joy to read so thank you I'm grateful for every single last one of you right now because this is a mid-month reading um, it's going to be slightly shorter than well uh, that's the hope anyway slightly shorter than the uh, the main monthly read <coughs> I'm going to pull three cards for your current energy three cards for what's coming towards you and three cards for advice because I like to do things in threes for some reason, um, threes and multiples thereof are very pleasing to me aesthetically, so that's why I do that. Um, I'm going to try and not pull any clarifiers, but I'm also prepared to break my own rule if I feel it's necessary, so watch this space. So, with all that said, let's get on with this. Okay. We've got two in there. We've got the Ace of Oceans, which is the Ace of Cups, and the Six of Fire, which is the Six of Wands. I like that. We'll read them together as well. Two more cards for Sagittarius, please. Where is Sagittarius right now? King of Swords. King of Skies as it is in this deck at least. They're so incredible these cards. One more card for Sagittarius please. And the Queen of Skies. Interesting. There we are. That's in your current energy. At the bottom of the deck, we've got the Knight of Skies. These are, the Skies is the uh, sword suit in here. So we've got some fast movement indicated here. And we've got the Three of Earth directly underneath that, which is talks about working together with people. It seems that you're thinking... <clears throat> Your thoughts are very much preoccupied at the moment with, with building with someone, right? In whatever respect that applies to you. Now, I'm probably going to pull some clarifiers for this. I can tell already because we've got a pair on the table. <coughs> Pop those there just ready. So, in your current energy at the moment, we have the Ace of Cups and the Six of Fire. Sagittarius, are you feeling quite pleased with yourself at the moment? I think maybe you are, because the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Oceans, it's the Ace of the Cups suit, and in the tarot that speaks about feelings and emotions, it's love, right? And it's how, how, it's our interpersonal relationships, you know, and the love that we feel for people. So the Ace contains all of that potential there. So it can be new love for a person or a thing or a place or yourself sometimes or a renewal of those things, take it as it applies to you. But this is something that you're feeling very strongly at the moment, right? You know, perhaps this is a new relationship that you started on or maybe this is a newfound sense of self because something that Sagittarians have struggled with over the last few months was this discrepancy between their outside circumstances and how they were feeling inside. And there was there's a feeling of, of being trapped, which was from, you know, the arse end of last year, frankly. <coughs> and bit by bit, 
so you have altered your external circumstances to now suit what you feel within yeah, and it's been glorious for you right? real sense of liberation <laughs> I've just done that little movement there yeah, the liberation and, and that is exactly what is on that card just noticed there yeah, spreading your wings and flying now the six of fire is the six of wands in a standard deck and that is it's a card of victory right it's a card of, of, of knowing that you've won right the five of wands is is conflict and adversity and, and change sometimes competition but it's it's a fierce competitive conflicted energy right? and and sometimes that can be rather petty I've actually seen it come up in my own personal readings for back when I used to um, kickbox competitively you know on days of fights I would have that come up um, but more often than not it usually feels slightly more than that for certainly when I read for other people anyway and we're talking about you know either conflict with other people or and this happens a lot, you know, internal conflict, right? This is a sense of having left that behind and, and conquered whatever the adversity, you know, the five of, of ones would indicate to you. And there's a certain amount of triumph with this new feeling that you've got here. That's beautiful. I really, really like that. And then we've got these two cards here. And in fact, I'm going to turn them around so that you see them as they lie on my table. Right? Uh, king queen of skies or swords as it is in this deck now <clears throat> this is a pair obviously of the sword suit and i love the fact that they're kind of they're swooping towards each other you know that they're, they're actually the eyes are locked on each other there you know and rather than it being owls as i've seen it in some decks or you know various kind of standard winged animals with birds of some description right we've got we've got part horses here funny that it should come up for you and what i feel straight off the bat is that that this is potentially a new relationship and this is someone with whom you have a meeting of minds you know and it's not just that it's somebody who's as free thinking and needing of their own mental freedom as you are right and it seems like you're kind of swooping together now if it's not a new relationship and it's going to be different for everyone then it could well be the balancing out of the masculine and the feminine we all have both of those traits within us you know, um, a, a balancing out of those energies and it, a, a true balancing of yourself mentally at this time I'm going to pull another couple of cards for this though because I am curious the sword suit deals with the mental space, you know, and communication primarily. So whether that's the way we communicate to ourselves, so in, in you know, our thoughts and our thought patterns, stuff like that, or whether it's how we communicate with the outside world. And if it is, if it is another person, then this person is on your level, right? free and floating around. If it's you, then this is glorious also. Tell me about the King and Queen of Skies, please. I don't usually take cards that fly out to the right, but this one seemed to do so with some uh, some vigour, so I'm going to take it. And it's the Ten of Wands, right? It's this burden that you've been feeling, right? <clears throat> That's primarily what this card is. It speaks of burden. It, it speaks of things being too hard, right? And being a ten, it speaks of completion of that, right? It, 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 it's a stopping of that. From here, you go back to the ace of wands and you, you progress up. Whether this is you balancing out your mental space or this is you meeting someone who complements your mental space, it's put an end to the burden and the hardship that you were feeling beforehand. King and Queen of Skies, please. I had a load of cards that fell out there and one that flipped. The one that flipped is the Nine of Cups. Right? That for me is a card of knowing exactly 
what you want, right? What will make you happy? How to make yourself happy? Mm. And it being everything that you ever wished for, right? Oh, you fuck. Got here. whole heap of cards that have come out here we've got the king of pentacles the king of cups and the fool yeah well, obviously these are all masculine energies but they don't need to refer to men they can be um they can be any it's just the masculine presentation of the suit and so we're talking about either you or a relationship that you've got making you feel in charge of your own emotions for the first time perhaps in a long time but also inspiring you to to deal with your own material space like the, the pentacle suit is a, is a very nurturing energy right it's, it's all about nurture and growth right it's slow growing of things and it feels like there's there's nurture and growth either of yourself or of this relationship and this this person that you've met and great feelings right? really deep feelings with that but also a sense of you truly making a fresh start now in uncharted territory you know somewhere you've never been before and if this is you sorting out your mental space then anything you do from this point on is going to be uncharted territory for you because you're looking at the world with new eyes if it's with a person then you are feeling liberated and excited about the future yeah, there's, there's pure joy in that card Right. Love it. Mm. So let's have a look and see what's coming towards you for the last two weeks of April, Sagittarius. It's coming towards Sagittarius. I'm not taking cars that drop, I want jumpers. Right. At the bottom of the deck, we've got the Nine of Cups, right? Again, as it just showed up in the other deck, right? This is, this is the wish fulfillment card. This is you kicking out a really positive energy into the universe, and it's borne out by the cards that have appeared here. So, <clears throat> the first card that we've got is the Three of Oceans, which is the Three of Cups in a standard deck, and that talks about celebration. I can sometimes talk about um, reunion and reconciliation, but I don't know. I could see that possibly being right here, but not necessarily. Like it, it, it doesn't feel as strong um, an interpretation as this. It just feels like more joy, you know, enjoyment of your life, and that's been missing, or was missing for a while. It looks like you're refinding it again. But then we've got the mage. This is the magician in the standard deck, and this is the ultimate manifesto, and. You know, I was talking about the, the discrepancy between your inside and your outside state and you were kind of resonating at two different frequencies and sending out mixed messages into the universe. Like As you have pulled all of those things in together, so you're aligning yourself so beautifully that you can literally bring into existence anything that you please at the moment because you're understanding the importance of your high vibration at the moment. And I think that's wonderful. Like it's it's conceivable actually that I could be seeing this because your sign has been coming up for so many of the other signs and the other readings, and, and they're all drawing on the healing energy that you are kicking out at the moment. I think this could be a reflection of that, just the effect that you have on the wider, you know, on, on your wider group it, that you could be completely unaware of. It's showing up quite strongly, but. <clears throat> What I really like about this particular in interpretation, uh, interpretation of the mage is that it, it's covered in butterflies. This is very light. And these are symbols of transformation right? and, and, and light energy. High vibration, actually. Yeah. And there's something that you usually see depicted on the thrones of the king and queen of uh, swords as well. It's that mental dexterity, but the, the lightness of thought, you know, no baggage. 
because they only deal with the things that are important, you know, the, the facts of the matter as they see them. And then we have the Knight of Skies, which came out at the bottom of the deck, right? This is movement of some description, and it's, it's mental movement. It seems like you're gaining some sort of mental momentum, in fact, because we've got these two cards together. It's like, it's kind of like... I've completely forgotten the word that I was after, but kind of magnifying the effect of this, bringing something into into uh, into existence from out of the skies. Let's get some clarifiers for this. Let's start with the three of oceans. Why is the three of oceans here? <laughs> Ace of Cups. Like you're feeling the love and you're spreading it around. You know, and that's wonderful. Other people are going to be responding to this really, really strongly. But it feel like it's the love that you have for yourself that, as much, you know, magnifying up. Second time this ace has come out for you here. Tell me about the mage. Why is the mage here for Sagittarius? The emperor. Whoa. You're really getting on top of your shit. The emperor is the uh, card of Aries. So it's sister fire energy to you. And it's also, you know, we are currently in Aries season. It seems like you're drawing on that fire energy that's available, cosmologically speaking, for you at the moment. Uh, we've got the Queen of Wands here as well. That's more fire energy and strictly Aries as well, but it could be Leo or Sagittarius. Now, that could be you, possibly, or it could be another fire sign. But there's... There's so much fire and victory here. It, I love it. This is very much a sense of you living in the moment. Getting in charge of your life, manifesting the things into your life that you want. But being receptive to things coming in as well, you know, it's balanced. Again, it's not like you're needing to go out and find these things. It's like you're setting your intention. You know exactly what you want with the Emperor and it, you bring it to you. You receive it through the Queen of Wands. Now, let's have a look at this Knight of Skies, which is the Knight of Swords. Let's see what's moving for Sagittarius. Is it even this deck that wants to be used? No, it's the Marigold. So this Knight of Skies looks quite dark, quite fierce, but I don't get any kind of sense of, of foreboding from it at all. It's, it seems quite mystical, actually. You know, thoroughly appropriate for you as a sign. It's kind of dark, but kind of not at the same time. What about this Knight of Skies? In much the same way, actually, as the King and Queen are. Uh, to be fair, we got here the magician. <laughs> Good Lord, Sagittarius, you're on a mission, All right? Tell me about this night of skies. What is Sagittarius trying to manifest? Two of Cups Ooh, and the boy. Goodness, right? Well, this seems quite straightforward. <clears throat> Your clarifiers are the Magician, the Two of Cups, and the Fool, right? It's the second time the Fool's come out. It's the second time the Magician's come out. You are very, very focused on this at the moment. Now, this this feels like a romantic relationship, but it does not have to be because, you know, it, you, we're perfectly capable of loving friends and family as well. You know, there's platonic relationships. Whatever it is, you are putting significant effort into manifesting a new start here either with people or person, right? Romantic or otherwise. That's uh, very straightforward, Sagittarius. Is. <laughs> trying to see if there's anything else that I can see here. I 
I'm hearing divinely guided when I'm looking at this magician card. Right? It's a completely different depiction to the other one, but you notice how it's holding a star in his hand. Right? It's just up like that. It's not even paying any attention to it. That's just drawing down this healing energy from from the cosmos, from somewhere, from source. You know, you, you're pulling it down and concentrating it into your hand. Right, so this is as as much this kind of you know, this alchemical healing that you're doing to other people as focusing your will, focusing this divine guidance that you're feeling at the moment into this ball of manifestation that you're getting ready to kick out into the world. Ooh, I love it. It's cool. It's pretty impressive. Let's have a look for some advice because I. Feels rather redundant because it doesn't seem like you really need any, but let's have a look. Some advice for Sagittarius, please. Ace of Earth, another ace. Some advice for Sagittarius. Wow, good lord. Bottom of the deck, we've got the Queen of Oceans, right? Which is it's the Queen of Cups in the start of the deck, you know, it talks about being receptive and open, right? You've got kings and queens all over this, and these don't necessarily all feel like people, but they all feel like energies that you're, you're kind of sucking in, you know, balanced energies. We've got those two kings there. Mm -hmm. King of Wands, King of Cups, King of Swords on the table. We've got the King of uh, the Queen of Wands here, the Queen of Oceans here, the Queen of Earth here as well. Underneath, you've got kings and queens everywhere. Balance, feminine and masculine energies for sure. But the reason why I'm smirking is because you got the ace, another fucking ace, right? This is the new start. But as advice, I feel like it's asking you to try and keep grounded just a little bit, right? I'm not saying stop. I'm not saying tether yourself to anything. I'm just saying remember to stay grounded because you have got a new start and it's beautiful and you are manifesting it into the 3d certainly but you still need to kind of keep a link with the ground while you're channeling all this stuff into you right the next card that you have is the wheel of fortune that's your card sagittarius certainly and normally this talks about lessons and checkpoints and stuff like that for me, you know, and the wheel turning in your favour because you're aligning your energy and everything. But what I'm seeing here is you, it's, it, these four elements depicted on this card and you drawing strongly from every single one of them, right? Utilising the magician energy to suck all of these in and turn the wheel for yourself in the way that you choose. It's really powerful. And then... <laughs> The last two cards are the world and the Ten of Oceans. It's the Ten of Cups. Right? You've had the Nine of Cups come out a couple of times for you, but you've got the Ten of Cups here. If this is a relationship, you have found someone who, I'm not going to say makes you happy because it's your own responsibility to make you happy, but somebody who is as able to make themselves happy, who is willing to come together with you and forge a life together with you, two strong, independent people, you know, choosing to spend your life together. But interestingly enough, it's ushering in the end of a cycle, right? This, and, and I'm really pleased to see that here because we had the fool here twice, right? It's like you're graduating, you're moving up with something. And there's great happiness involved for both of you, I would say. Wow, I was almost disgustingly positive, Sagittarius. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's not really, like, I think this is amazing, but like, there's nothing even remotely negative here. It's wonderful. Don't really know what to say. Well, we're just going to leave it there, I think. Um, best of luck to you all, and I'll see you soon.